Good morning, everybody, and uh, happy championship men's basketball tonight. I'll tell you, Baylor pulled it off in, in, against Notre Dame um, in the women's bracket, and now tonight we've got Texas Tech and Virginia, Hank. Uh, you had a fabulous weekend. I think you won everything on the board, and you had you had the three exactas in the horses. No, two. Oh, two. I'm sorry. I didn't have the exacta in the um, in the race in uh, Kentucky. I ran uh, first and third. But uh, I had a forty-five dollar exacta and a try in the wood. Uh, Tacitus, the horse that I gave out as uh, Bill Mott's Derby horse, the one he said he was the best that going to distance one in the wood, and uh, I had a. And uh, the favorite ran second. Um, and uh, the uh, horse, Baffert's uh, horse who roasted, uh, beat the favorite in the uh, race in California. It was a very exciting race. Roaster, who uh, was the, his original favorite horse, who had the uh, surgery. I talked about him on the show Friday. And uh, he had come back because he had a breathing problem, and he had uh, uh, some surgery. He came back and looked very good on his comeback. Ran a heck of a race. And uh, he just came up on the outside and nipped Baffert's favorite, uh, who was the uh, derby favorite at 8-1. to one. And Roaster is now the derby favorite. And uh, this week he got the Oakland uh, Arkansas Derby, and then everything will be settled prior to the Kentucky Derby. Uh, so, uh, there's, there's, um, I rode through, I, I don't know that he can win the Kentucky Derby or not. Tacitus, uh, ran a big race in the woods, and, uh, like, I, I've been touting him right along. Could have gotten 25 to 1 on him. Uh, I don't know what you can get right now. I haven't checked. Well, that's excellent news and, and information, as usual. Um, I'll tell you one thing. Henders and I talked about the, uh, the blown call in the Auburn game, and Henders knew who that official was. He's been guilty of bad calls or blown calls before. He knew his name, and uh, there's no question that uh, Auburn got shafted in that game. You know, people can say, well, they didn't see the the double dribble either, but that's the official's job. And, uh, you know, uh, I'll tell you, uh, you know, one of the teams in this game should not be here, Virginia. They should never have gotten the ball back. Disgrace. Well, that's, that's the argument everybody has. You know, there's always bad calls, missed calls, etc. That's why so many people want to have reviewable situations, but I don't think anybody saw that. That, that wouldn't have been reviewed because nobody saw it. No, that's exactly right. Nobody saw it. But I'll tell you something. Uh, Bruce Pearl now, now knows how Sean Payton feels. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's no question about that. Um, yeah, it's it really comes down to... Uh, too, too many, too many bad calls. Too many missed calls. It makes uh, it really would like to see it straightened out. I don't know how the hell they could do it. I mean, it's just sad. But you know something, uh, Virginia is very lucky to be where they are right now. I talked to Tom Penders yesterday. For those people who don't know Tom Penders, he's a long Tom is old friend of mine from uh, New York, used to hang out at Runyon's, and uh, he was a coach at Rhode Island for a while, and uh, he was a coach at Texas, and he was a coach at Houston, and uh, while well, he was coaching in Texas, he had a walk-on um, who uh, uh, played for him, and then uh, when he was a graduate, he was a graduate assistant coach breaking down films and just working as an assistant and uh, uh, scouting and 
working with uh, Tom as uh, an assistant coach at Texas. And that was uh, the first coaching job for the guy who now coaches Texas Tech. Uh, they mentioned it on the telecast Saturday, so I called Tom. And uh, we talked for a while, and Tom told me, yeah, uh, the coach called him in November, asked him to come out for a while and watch his practices and see what he thought. Tom was blown away by what he saw in the practices. Like you said, they were the most disciplined practices you could imagine. He left nothing out, worked those kids hard, but they uh, were always prepared. And uh, Tom was actually out here doing a seminar at uh, one of the hotels uh, at, during the uh, first round uh, for the high rollers. And uh, he knew uh, uh, one of the uh, hosts at one of the casinos here. And then he gets a call from the Texas Tech coach asking him if he can come over to Anaheim and uh, watch him in his preparation for the second round, see what he thought. And yeah. he's been with him since. Wow. Kind of as, a, as a, uh, like, like helping him coach. Not telling them coaching games, but in their preparation and what breaking down film and scouting the other side. And uh, so we were talking about it, and um, he said that uh, one thing that they because they're going to be concerned about in this game is you know guy and uh, you know his outside shooting. I'm sure they did, but their defense smothers everybody. And uh, in our middle of our, while we were talking. Uh, and Tom lives in Miami now. He has for a few years. And he and his wife used to get together with me, you know, for dinners and whatnot. And uh, he's, uh, he he uh, said that, uh, that while we were talking, he said, "Oh, Jim Nance is calling me. I gotta go." I said, "Hey, I understand." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you're connected. That's for sure. How much of uh, Chris Beard's Coaching style resembles Bobby Knight. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, Bobby Knight talked to Tom when they hired him. Uh, Knight, son, and Bobby uh, got a rundown on him. Tom, of course, recommended him heartily. Uh, but I don't know that they resemble Bobby Knight. Uh, you know, I, I don't remember Knight defense is being as smothering as these are. And uh, I think but Knight's teams had a little bit better balance in terms of being able to score. Uh, and Knight was a little uh, you know, more fiery. But obviously. But you know, Moody and Culver are guys uh, you know, Culver is a guy who can not only score in the clutch, but he can also distribute the ball. And uh, but they're going to be wary, wary, uh, are wary of uh, of a guy and his late uh, late game heroics. And uh, I think they will have a defense for him. Well, they better. <laughs> He's been pretty damn good. Well, they have had a defense for every situation so far. They sir, certainly did. Uh, they they shut down Winston. I mean, he he didn't have a good game at all. That's that pressure is their pressure is overwhelming. But you know, the Virginia is a very good team. Number one last year, this year they're right up there at the top um, all year long. Different. This is going to be one hell. This would this is what you call I think I think the word is slobber knocker. It's going to be uh, very physical, very tough game. Final score. They may not reach first team that gets a sixty is going to win. <laughs> I don't know if they. I don't know if anybody gets a sixty. Sixties <laughs> uh, a sixties a high mark when you got a, a total of one seventeen. It's a big number. I don't know. That's the that that's a good betting opportunity if you can figure it out. That number is really low. Um, baseball, what's going on in baseball? What do you see 
The Yankees uh, poured it on Baltimore yesterday, but you would figure that eventually would happen. Houston has only played uh, two games at home so far, so uh, and they host the Yankees. Verlander against Tanaka should be a good one. Um, Tampa Tampa's doing well. They did well last year. They're doing well again this year. They got their big guy going today, Snell. Um, he's a hell of a pitcher. Cy Young Award winner last year. Favorite on the road, about 150, I think. Something like that. You got to love the way Tampa's being managed. He's very unorthodox. But uh, he takes pitchers out and leaves them in the ball game so they can bring them back in. It's kind of an interesting uh, way to manage, and it's working out for him. And uh, they did well against San Francisco. Uh, the Dodgers are hitting the ball. Uh, they're, uh, they're smacking the ball around right now. Um, the Yankees uh, swept Baltimore. Red Sox can't get any. Uh, can't get very good. well. They finally got a good uh, pitching game yesterday, and. Uh, you know, things are going to start getting sorted out early. Yeah, you get you get it through uh, April and May, then things things reach its uh, their own level. You know, it's it's uh, the first couple of months are a little bit abnormal, but good opportunity to make money because you you get opportunity to bet against some of these big price teams that aren't quite yet in sync. And uh, later on, that becomes a problem. But um, there's different ways. Like, if, like for example, if, if you don't want to lay the, the price with Snell today on the road, which is a pretty good pitching matchup, actually, a lot of people will say, well, I don't want to lay 150 on the road against etc." I mean, th I'm just making a hypothetical thing here. There's one way you can look at it. You can go in there and maybe bet the first five innings. It might, it might be a good under bet for the first five innings, that type of thing. So there's different ways to beat baseball. You don't always have to pick a side and lay a price or, or even take the dog. You can go in there and you can bet the over or the under. Um, like Hank mentioned before, the first team would get the 60 in the basketball game tonight. Well, there's ways of betting over and under of how much each team will score. And you can do that, you know, and, and that's, that's another way to win. There's a lot of ways to win these days. In the old days, you had to pick the side, and then they came up with totals, and then they, you know, the the evolution of sports betting has made it actually easier to win money. Well, there you can bet individuals. Uh, for example, uh, uh, I think uh, Culver is, uh, is uh, 14, uh, and uh, the uh, top guy on... Uh, on Virginia is 70 uh, for individual scoring. 17 number is a little bit high, I think. Yeah, I would say. Who's going to get 17 on that? In that against that defense? Yeah, well, I don't know. I think yeah. they're going to be looking for him. And then there's Mooney, who's been a big story, and uh, what a courageous guy he's been, and he's come up with. Uh, you know, late in games and really kind of carry uh, Texas Tech. So they've got a couple of guys who can score on that team. So, it, 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 you know, it'll, it'll, it'll be an interesting game to watch. I don't know what the ratings are going to be because these are not two high-profile teams going at it exactly. You know, it's, it's funny. I mean, you, do you really have to have Duke and Kentucky and – and, and the big blue bloods in there for people to be interested. That that it, it really is a shame that that's the way it goes because it doesn't expand basketball the way it should be. And this these are these are the two best teams at this point. I mean, you can make arguments that Purdue should have been beaten Virginia and Baylor should have beaten Virginia. And, and yeah, that comes down to it. But every every tournament we have these bad beats and close losses and. Big mistakes by officials—that happens. Um, but 
these two guys, I mean, they know how to play defense. This, these are two well-coached teams. Beard and Bennett have done a fabulous job with these clubs. And um, I'm, I'm, I can't wait. I mean, I'll be honest with you that um, I'm not going to try to sell anybody. I have a kind of a futures ticket on uh, Texas Tech. Now, I didn't bet it as a futures bet. What I did is I put a $500 bet on the money line in her first tournament game, and I just kept rolling it over instead of buying the price. Um, because you never get the full, full value that way. So I have a pretty good money line bet on Texas Tech. So naturally, if I were just going to bet the game, I'd be betting Texas Tech, but I already have a bet. Well, I uh, on the uh, CBS show that I do, um, I'm their uh, top guy you know, among all their handicappers. I'm 33 and 18 wow. um, in the tournament, so uh, which is uh, 65 percent. So uh, you know that's a winning record, and against some pretty good guys. So uh, they've been uh, if you if you uh, dial up CBS Sportsline. Uh, you'll see that uh, they gave me some pretty good ink this weekend. Well, I'm not surprised that you're leading. <laughs> I talk to you all the time, and I know I know you do very well, and I don't think there's anybody out there that's close to that. Um, congratulations on that, Hank. Um, anything else you want to cover? And then, and then, yeah, well, NBA season ends Wednesday, and uh, oh. we get into the playoffs. Thank God. Thank God for that. Um now, I'm not knocking the NBA, but the NBA regular season is just brutal. It's just, it just one long exhibition season, in my opinion. And the hockey playoffs get started, too. So. Yes, that's exciting as well. So we should be making some money for the next couple of months with these NBA and hockey stuff. And, of course, we've got baseball that's already doing very well. So I'm excited. And this week is, and this week is the Masters. Yes, and we should talk about that on Wednesday because um, we can get some bets in on that. I have a few bets in already. Um, yeah, let's let's gear that up for Wednesday because it doesn't tee off till Thursday. Anything else, Hank? Not that I can think of. Uh, I had an interesting experience on uh, Friday when I went over to uh, take. Uh, my uh, ESPN uh, show for Friday night, and I was uh, Ari Fleischer came in to do his show for Fox, and uh, we, he walked in and he looked at me and he said, "So what do you think about Auburn?" <laughs> and we started talking to. He knew Bruce Pearl because he was friendly with the athletic director at Tennessee, and. Uh, Whatever your politics are, he's a real good guy. And uh, we talked for several minutes because he was waiting to go on and do his show for Fox. And I was waiting to go in and do my show for ESPN. And he invited me to come here to the president's speak as his guest on Saturday, which was very nice of him. But uh, I uh, politely turned it down. Uh, I had uh, very important horse racing events to watch at the same time would certainly take precedence so we're going to hear the president speak uh not to be political but uh but he, he was very nice to me and we talked for several minutes and uh he's uh he's, he's a big fan of espn and he knew who i was right away uh so uh that, that was nice that's one of the props of the season yeah you know you 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 deserve you've earned all the accolades that you get, Hank, you've been around for a number of years. You've accomplished a lot. You've got great stories. you got to write a book. You know, anybody ever tell you you should write a book? Yes. Yes, several people. When are you going to start? Well, I was uh, going to start when I, before I left Florida with a very good writer who was going to sit down with me and never got around to it, so... Uh, my agent has somebody in their book department who is going to send somebody to sit down with me and still wait. So, I don't know. I better get to it pretty pretty soon. Can't write them posthumously. I <laughs> know. It's, it's not a good plan. Well, you're not going anywhere fast anyway, so don't. 
I'm not too worried. Oh, no. no, you're not going to. Um, we'll both be around another 20 years. It's crazy. I've uh, been doing this so long, it, it's unbelievable. But uh, funny how you get started in something you didn't know that it would be your whole life. You know, my, my, I started, yeah. you know, I, my first interest in this, I was 14 years old. And uh, I was in a pool room. I used to shoot pool a lot. I got pretty good at it at one point. And uh, I used to like to follow sports and bet on the high school games. And the owner of the pool hall asked me if I'd make lines on all the local high school games in basketball. And I said, you really? You want me to do that? And I said, yeah, I'll give you 20 bucks a week. <laughs> okay, so I did it. There was a blackboard. We pencil put it out there in the chalk on the blackboard and put up numbers, and it was fun. But I was, I, I was just a kid. It was fun. I think he took $5 bets. So it was his biggest bet. But, uh, going back in the day, long live stories. Hank, we'll talk again on Wednesday. We'll tee it off on Wednesday with the Masters. All right, Jim. Have a good couple of days. Good luck tonight. Thank you, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.